sort of in the middle. I'll draw a little darker than normal. You don't have to draw it a straight line because the wonky stuff is interesting. So I'll just start in that corner of the room with a little vertical, right? Because I know I have a vertical. Now, the issue with it is that so, that if I want to draw like a little box or something like that, I no longer have lines that are parallel to the horizon line, like in a two-dimensional sense on the page. So if I want to draw like a cube, I have to make things recede to, to two different vanishing points on the horizon line, right? And then I cross them to find the, the back. And then I find the back plane, right? So I have found the front of the cube, the bottom plane, the connection side, and the top plane here. He makes it seem so easy. And it's like you start putting your pencil to the paper. Yeah, yeah. Like, Wait a second. Exactly. Um, well, that's the, that's the thing about that easy. that's the thing about learning. Until you until you try it and screw it up, you don't really yeah. like. I had to watch videos when I went home. I was that's so what I did yeah, last that, night. And then it like clicked. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh. Exactly. You'll you'll find a point where where when you do these things that you're like, oh my god, I can fit anything into a page. Yeah. And that is when you know that you have mastered the lesson, right? Mm -hmm. So for the room here, applied, you're not going to have vanishing points on the page, which so you so you estimate. Remember how the radiating thing? So around a vanishing point, all the lines that are going to go to it radiate. Mm -hmm. So they all have to converge. When lines, one line might hit it and another one might not, those are called diversion, right? So that means you, you screwed up a little bit. So here, for this, you want to include that back corner, right? So you know that that one line goes that way, <coughs> the bottom line goes to the same vanishing point, right? Somewhere on the horizon line, and then splits, and then the other one goes to a different point. And then you can, you can always readjust the angles as you see fit, and the proportional widths. So it's okay to be messy. And then this one is gonna go to the same vanishing point as the wall, right? So those have to, those can't diverge, right? So they have to go to the same vanishing point. If this one were at that angle, it would diverge. So this has to roughly feel like it goes to that vanishing point. Same with that, right? Then, same thing here, right? They have to feel like they're gonna converge somewhere. So at some point, this line, this line, this line, and this line, they all have to meet at a vanishing point somewhere out here, right? So if you want to keep yourself organized, you can sort of draw in loose vanishing points. And what's more important is the feel of it than the actual total accuracy. Then, you know, you can kind of do your thumb measurement, right, and get the rough height of the desks back there, and you know that they come out, and you see the top, so you get desks. Then you have a whole line of desks here, so you can just sort of quickly subdivide them. Whatever. <coughs> and then you draw through them and find the back so that you can make sure that they exist in this physical space, right? And you don't want to intersect the point behind this line, right? Because that's going through the wall. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you see those errors in video games and 3D renderings. So you just make sure that it goes down far enough that it doesn't, it exists on the floor plane, right? And then for the, for the grid up here, you just sort of subdivide every once in a while, make your little hatch marks, make sure they get a little further apart as they get further away from the vanishing point. And then you just kind of can make them radiate. And this is what happens when you include too much. So I put the vanishing points on the page. So now, what if I were really connecting these vanishing points, they would have to go like that, right? So the, so it would create this huge, crazy distortion. Do you see that? So to keep it comfortable, you kind of have to go with what feels right. 
So this doesn't really, having, having the grid actually radiate out of that point doesn't feel right to me, you know? For the lines, like on this way, do you want to curve them at all or just keep them straight? Curved, curved lines are actually five point perspective, the fisheye effect. I was just saying because yeah. this kind of is kind of curved, so that mean the, that mm -hmm. has to be curved too since it's... Well, I wouldn't curve them, but your, your ideal is straight, right? Yeah. For this, for this sort of thing. And then when you knock in details, right, so let's say you figure this little column is up here. See that? And then when you want to knock in, say, the, the window, you figure that, you know, it's roughly centered in there. And the way you find a center is you draw an X, just like in a square, mm -hmm. and then that's your center and perspectival space. So let's say that there was actually a bar in the center of that window. You could create a little, you know, a little bar there in the center. And you know that it's the center because you've drawn a little X bit. So and you can knock in the rest of the window. Get the frame of the window a little bit. And this is kind of why you want to do the two color thing, right? It gets a little confusing. Um, so yeah, so the ceiling grid, you know, if I stick with that point, that's going to be really weird. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of only start to get vertical way out here. So I kind of control the distortion a little bit. Because um, if you follow the rules, it's going to look really, really weird. So then for the rest of the grid, you just kind of do your lines out like that. So are we not doing a point anymore, like a viewpoint? Well, I've included too much in, <coughs> right. this, in this setup, okay. you know, over here especially. Mm -hmm. um, so here it's going to look really, really weird and different. Mm -hmm. But what you want is just to make sure that each set of lines is going to converge somewhere. And accuracy of sticking to vanishing points is secondary to the feel and mood of the drawing. Right. Mm -hmm. So for, for practice, what you do is you put the two vanishing points on the page, right? Put one here and one here, and you just use the room as sort of inspiration. So you're practicing following the rules of perspective, right? So I'm thinking through the drawing that way. Oh, I just now got the point system. I was so confused why, how you got those two points. See, well, I just kind of that. picked them, right? The points and the horizon line are an imaginary tool to get you where you need to go, mm -hmm. right? And then with the grid, you know, you divide up your little, your little patch marks or whatever, right? And then you draw the grid to that point or from that point. How do you determine that one side? Why can't you do the grid work like the other? Well, you do, yeah. Oh, so you, you just do. Okay. Doing boom, okay, boom, 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 there. Oh. But you see how d distorted the grid starts to get when you include too much? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where perspective gets fun and interesting. So exterior, of a building, you'd look at the corner of a building, right? And it'd be much the same thing, right? So in here, we're inside that box that we were talking about at the beginning. Here, we're inside the box. And then if you do it outside, right, you're looking at a huge, gigantic building. You got vanishing points. You know, you make the building. You, there, maybe there's a big door in the middle. So you figure out where the door is, maybe it's arched. Draw a little, or draw a little arch there. And then maybe it's got a whole bunch of windows, and all the windows, they go to the, um, they go to the horizon lines, right? And then the interiors of the windows, they go to that other vanishing point. 
so that's how you kind of create details is find find the proportional height subdivide if they all go in little rows maybe it's maybe the rows are different on this one but the details all adhere to the perspective too And then we'll, if you want, we can talk about inclined planes. Make sense? Cool. That's a good stopping point on our video, I think. <laughs>